Welcome to the Retail Media Roundtable with Drew from Vantage and Andreas from Maloco. We are here today uh, under the guise of AI and, and talking about AI and retail media. And one of the things I love about what you're presenting here is a practical view of the application of AI and retail media. Yeah. Um, and I'd love if you could give us a really high level view of what that is and and what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, so I think the observation that we have as a as a company and what we do, so right like the the background is like very much like machine learning uh, folks, right? Like most of the folks are like machine learning engineers. And so with like a tech first kind of like view, we we approach like a lot of a lot of questions. And so if you, you know, the space is currently so exciting and so interesting. Um, and if you break it down, right, like essentially transform models are, are changing like consumer behavior, are changing how shopping works, how commerce works, like all that stuff. And everybody's like, well, agentic this and like AI is going to change the game. And that's all really exciting. I love to talk about like how fun it is to book my travel through an AI agent and agentic uh, type of commerce. And that's really exciting. I do think though a lot of those things will take some time and will require some re rework of, and we talked earlier about this, like we'll take some time to rework some of the pipes. Mm -hmm. um, it is hugely exciting though. I think um, ultimately a number of companies will be formed and it's the next wave, right? Like there was the web wave, there was the mobile wave, and I think the next wave is coming right now and it's currently being built. That's exciting. However, um, I think a lot of like the tech, the big tech players that exist currently and essentially win in retail media, they um, have already built tech infrastructure that is machine learning based, that is AI based, that allows them to outperform everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think the rest of the industry only has a chance to win, to monetize their assets by using the latest technology. So, and, so tell me about that. The, it, it seems like the legacy architecture for retail media for rest of market has not kept pace with um, where the, the likes of the largest players are, are living today. Yep. What is going to specifically differentiate this, say, from an on-site perspective? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different things that are like essentially technologies that can be used right now that change the game in a dramatic way. And for on-site specifically, I think the exciting thing is really to personalize ads in real time. And it sounds like, well, Obviously, that's the thing to do, right? Like I type in chat GPT and like I type one word and it's getting auto-completed. We have the technology that can take the, the word, uh, turn it into turn it into numbers, predict ultimately what's going to happen next. And uh, for advertising, not everyone's using this. It's not the technology that is rolled out at every retailer, at every e-commerce player right now, but it's readily available. And it changes the game dramatically. Like efficiency gets so much better. Um, the, the the monetization of the most valuable asset just increases dramatically. Well, I think that that is the proposition, right? The the personalization on the surface is powerful from a customer perspective. Yep. But what does it lead to? And, and what you're describing is efficiencies in the buy, yep. increased conversion rate, increased Got value it. for the advertiser, for the retailer, for the customer. Um, do you have, can you quantify that in any way or, um, what does that actually look like from a value perspective? Well, so, you know, if you look at, uh, experiences currently where you just like take, um, standard ways and, you know, a lot of the technology that is currently rolled out and used is like years old. Um, you essentially reach at some point like stagnation, you can't increase much. And so, once you combine what I just mentioned in terms of like personalization with outcome-based bidding, uh, you get dramatic efficiency improvements. And that allows, in addition to those efficiency improvements, you can also increase ad load without changing the experience for consumers. And that is like a dramatic increase in value. So one of the behaviors in retail media that seems pretty consistent across the board is we reach a max capacity 
of the owned and operated website or stores or whatnot. And, and therefore we have to look outwards yep. to find new spaces to monetize. What you're saying is that there is significantly more value still in the O and O um, that we're not able to realize today because of a lack of personalization or a lack of, of, um, you know, optimization of yield and things driven by what, what you're discuss discussing. Exactly. And I think the point that you're making here, wait a second, there's in-store too, there's offset too, and offset grows, but you also have got to, you have to have a look at like the base and where the growth is happening. So, and you should do both, obviously, right? You should use the latest technology and optimize and create the best experience possible for any shopper, uh, for the advertisers, for the brands, and just create like the best possible uh, experience for everyone involved. Uh, but of course, you should also do that offsite, for example, or in store. I think that's something that that uh, you're excited about, aren't you? That was a good pullback. That was great. <laughs> the um, yeah, I, I uh, so if I if I zoom out, I think one of the core challenges in our space is that we have created a very fractured technology architecture. That yep. that the ecosystem for retail media is built in a silo at a tactic level, yep. and that means that on an individual re retailer basis. Advertisers are forced to go to five or six or ten different tools or technologies or or via a managed service to buy media. Yep. And then you you map that out across the hundreds of retail media businesses in the world, and it becomes very difficult to manage. Yep. And so the thing that I'm fixated on right now, at a true bare bones level, is making it easier and more appealing for advertisers to buy, and make it easier and more uh, efficient for retailers to operate. And yep. you do that with this unification layer that connects all of these disparate pieces into a single buying layer, a single workflow yeah. um, for all of the jobs to be done. And to your point, it, it is not, I don't think you're ever going to get there as a single company. And so yeah. as one example, we work together in how do we connect all of those pieces? Yeah. But you're going to get, best-in-class solutions for on-site. You're going to get best-in-class solutions for a CMS in-store. You're going to get best-in-class solutions for a CDP, purpose-built for that thing. Yeah. And then bringing it all together, I think, is what is going to make, to your point, this industry competitive with the top. Yeah. And I think like buying needs to be as easy as possible, right? Have like campaign creation that is fully automated and don't, don't like build teams uh, managing campaigns build teams that can generate revenue and automate campaign creation, right? That's what like yeah. the big ones do. That's what like Meta does. That's what Google does. But there is unfortunately a lot of folks uh, that we work with that currently don't do that yet. And yeah. I'm like, well, why not? The technology Re is there. media on a spreadsheet. I, I think that to this point, and this is the thing that fascinates me about the transition from uh, like spreadsheets to, to true AI models, um, Retail is very comfortable in a spreadsheet-based yep. world. And behaviorally, the transition from that to letting um, an LLM or, or letting a, an agent run everything end-to-end -end is, to me, a pretty significant leap. Yep. Um, do, you, do you think about behavioral change and, and how that impacts uh, decisions that retailers are making or their likelihood to engage with something like this? I do see and hear um, the change management within the organization. So like behavior that exists within the organization is actually one of the biggest topics at every company because you essentially what you just described, like that change within a company and that behavior change within the company um, takes time and is actually one of the biggest tasks. Technology can be implemented but ultimately, the biggest job is actually change management and transformation within the organization. Yeah. I think th there was an MIT study I saw today that was uh, looking at U.S. adoption of AI in within different organizations. And it was talking about something called work slop, which was this idea that a significant portion of how we're using AI today is to build an email or to uh, make a presentation nice and that the true um, the utilization and, and uh, platform in, in finding efficiencies and, and um, 
using it to its full extent has not truly been realized yet. Yeah. Um, I don't, are, is that, are you running up against that? Like the, the, uh, lack of true appreciation for the to total potential? Um, <clears throat> We we do sometimes see that where there is like not a full understanding of like what's the what's the change possible, and we also engage a lot in these kind of like how do you change an organization from within. Um, also, we have like a, a couple of leaders in the company too that came from like Amazon or Google and essentially fought those battles in these companies previously, and it's amazing because like it turns out like these battles are the same in all these companies. And I think from what I learned is, so for example, one of the battles that is fought in every company is how much inventory do you make available for ads? Great example. So then you, you the, the, and you can debate about it, well, should AI take over or not? Do you lose control? Can you, can you, can you make sure that like every ad is truly like a good experience? And then the question is like, well, what if you do it manually? Can you guarantee that? So like obviously there's always like a, a, an, an error rate, right? but you got to make it so that uh, that it's highly relevant. If you use the technology available, the ad experience for everyone will increase and improve. And for that debate to happen between how, how much ad inventory do you make available, you got to define like some um, KPIs and then the team should battle. That's mm. exactly what should happen. That's exactly what happened at Amazon. That's exactly what happened at, at Google. Like I, I remember those folks, like the there's like the search folks and then there are the ads folks. Those were the fiercest battles within a company. So this is this is a framework for how to effectively use innovation. I do think so. Okay. Right? Like you define like KPIs and you let everyone work towards creating the best possible experience. And the ads folks should do so. The folks who believe in organic too. Uh, and you got to define like KPIs that allow you to compare one with the other. And I think that drives essentially organizations to become better and better. And that also requires everyone to use technology because otherwise you can't actually like, you can't win this race. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, I, I really do appreciate the the perspective you're bringing to this. I think this market is um, going through, to your point, some pretty foundational change. Um, and I, I, what you're bringing by way of practical views of how to use this thing effectively is is so very important. What are you, to close out, what are you most excited about in our space overall? What am I most excited about in our space? I think um, the <clears throat> it's two topics. One is like right now, create the best possible ad experience with the kind of consumer experiences we currently have. And if I look into the future, like one, two, three, four years, I'm excited about the future consumer experiences that are about to come and how we monetize those. Because um, I truly believe like there's going to be completely new experience and we will start to monetize those too. Uh, and both is truly exciting. How about you? I'm most excited about this premise or idea that we can get back to the basics in this thing. I think yep. retail media has somewhat lost its way in the evolution where it is now focused on um, becoming a tech performance heavy proposition akin to that of um, the programmatic landscape of old. And, and I think that's great. I think we are simplifying buying for people as one example. But what I'm most excited about is this narrative that it can be more than that, that that it should be ingrained in the overall retail proposition, that it is a new business model that we need to be exploring holistically. It is om omni-channel at its core. And I think the value proposition of retail media, if you, if you strip it down to what it was originally intended to do, is getting advertisers in front of the consumer when they're reaching for their wallet. Yep. And we're getting back to that place now and recognizing that true value. And I think that to me kind of reignites the passion for this space. Yep. Very cool. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Andreas, it was great talking to you. Yeah, it was great talking to you too. Yeah.